Hello, it's me again, your boy Toilet Vodka, with another F tier guide on how to play Grounded. In this video, we're going to cover a few of the things that have changed between the last video and this video, including how to get to the Hedge Lab, crafting level 2 weapons and armor, surveying the cookery, and cooking 101. As always, there are tips and tricks interspersed throughout the video, so make sure that you watch all the way through and pay close attention so that you can maximize the benefit of this video. If you haven't watched the previous two videos in this series before this one, I highly recommend that you check those two videos out first, and then come back to this guide. Quick note, first and foremost, is that Quartzite has actually been replaced by Tough Nuggets and Style Nuggets for weapon and armor upgrades. You can find them in the same locations as previously, in caves, the Ant Hill, etc. However, they also no longer respawn, so you can craft them later on in the game, but for the early game, treat your upgrades very sparingly. So up next we're actually going to head to the Hedge Lab, and you guessed it, it's located in the Hedge. Getting to the Hedge Lab is not terribly difficult, though you have to make a sprint across the yard. It's located in the southeast corner of the map. If you run in a general southeasterly direction, you will eventually make it to the Hedge. What I like to do is head pretty much directly east, and then I head south, so you'll see the Bird Bath, and once you reach the Bird Bath, you're pretty much in the right location. Ideally, before you make a very long run across the map, remember to change your mutations. Use Cardio Fan if you have it, use Natural Explorer, those will both help you run faster and regenerate stamina quicker. You'll spend a fair bit of time in the Hedge Lab, so make sure that you brought a full canteen and probably some food with you. Once you actually reach the Hedge, you'll see berries all over the place. You can shoot them down with your bow, or if they're already on the ground, you can give them a whack with your axe. Once that berry blows up, grab all the chunks that pop out and hold on to those, save them for later. You're going to need quite a few of them later in this video. Once you've made it around the birdbath, we're actually going to backtrack a little bit and focus your attention on this radar dish that appears to be sticking out of the hedge lab. That is the unlock for the resource analyzer, super useful tool. Once you're actually in the hedges, you're in the bush, you'll find a few zip lines and stuff after you've climbed up and around a little bit. But once you reach this particular zip line, you'll notice a doorway about halfway through, and that doorway is actually where the unlock is for the resource analyzer. You will have to fight off a few uh, robots, but they're not too difficult to dispatch at this point. And the resource surveyor is great because you can survey any item that you've previously found, and it'll show you the location and cluster density on the map. So if you're looking for multiple items, you can find them that way. Moving on, we're going to continue with the pathway to get into the hedge lab itself. I'm not going to show you the entire path so as not to ruin it for you, but once you've found this paper clip on a stick, you're essentially on the right track. There's going to be a field station right at the top of this guy, and uh, once you reach the field station, you know you're on the right track. You'll see field stations roughly located along the way until you finally reach the hedge lab. Once you're in the hedge lab, you have to find these little shreds of paper around the hedge lab in order to get into the room and get the hedge lab unlocks. I'm not going to spoil that for you though, so once you're actually finished with the hedge lab and you've gotten everything that you want or need out of there, it may take you a few tries. Make sure that you walk down this tunnel because it is an exit that you can open up once you've done the hedge lab, and it makes it easier to get back there in case you want to go back there for some other reason. Once you've hopefully made it back from the hedge lab with your spoils, make sure at some point relatively soon you analyze the berry piece because it gives you the insect hammer recipe, and that's your level 2 hammer, so definitely very important. Speaking about level 2 weapons and armor here, we have a few things to talk about. First and foremost, you've got the red ant club, you've got the spider fang dagger, you've got the mosquito needle, and these take various uh, insect parts that are a bit more difficult insects to conquer than some of the previous ones, including stink bugs, wolf spiders, ladybugs, and the like. So we're going to talk about defeating those bugs, getting the recipes so that you can craft these things, and what you can do with them once they are crafted. First up we've got bombardier beetles which are actually the least tricky of the three, usually I just like to keep them at a distance so they can't hit you with their acid and then peg them with the bow. Once you've actually killed it you'll get bombardier parts and the boiling glands. Those are both useful for your crafting recipes, uh, so hold on to those. And while you're here if you have the spade gulch explorer quest you can build the spade gulch marker. Once you have the parts from the bombardier beetle, definitely analyze them the same way that you analyze everything else. And this will unlock the jerky rack, which is important for the cooking portion of the video that's coming later. And you'll notice that I'm going to run through these a little bit quickly. It's because at this point you should be pretty familiar with vanquishing your foes, as in bugs in the yard. If you want a more detailed guide, 
put it down in the comments below and I will make a more detailed guide on how exactly to fight bugs. Up next are wolf spiders, and at this point in the game they are a little bit tough to fight if you have more people. It actually makes it quite a bit easier, but since I'm fighting them by myself I like to cheese them with my bow, so I stand up on this uh, portion of the oak tree here and they can't really get to me and I'll just peg them with arrows. Be careful because they can poison you and they deal a ton of damage. So definitely pay attention. Killing wolf spiders actually gives you a perk that reduces the damage from their venom. So that's a benefit of killing wolf spiders as well. They'll give you their parts, same as the other bugs, and then you can analyze those. The ladybug is up next. Ladybugs used to be a bit tougher to kill than they are now, but that doesn't mean that they still don't pack a punch. And if you're fighting ladybugs, be sure to time your blocks carefully or you will find yourself in a world of hurt. Another good note is that ladybug heads, which you need, drop relatively infrequently, so you're going to have to kill a few ladybugs to get one. And last but certainly not least here, we have the stink bug. When stink bugs attack, most often they release a poison cloud that damages you as long as you're standing inside of it. Unfortunately, in order to effectively kill stink bugs, you need a gas mask, which requires stink bug parts to make. You will have to kill them before they become easier to manage, but once you've made the gas mask, then your life becomes a whole lot easier when dealing with stink bugs. Analyzing stink bug parts gives you the recipe for repair glue, which is useful for repairing any item that's been upgraded beyond level 5. The spider armor is my go-to level 2 armor because when you have the full set bonus, it increases your stamina regeneration rate, allowing you to cross further distances even faster. Most recipes for level 2 armor and weapons call for berry leather, the first level 2 weapon slash tool that I recommend that you make is going to be the insect hammer and following that should be the insect axe for your level 2 first tool upgrades. The level 2 tools you use for a lot of different purposes, it's just a natural upgrade path but also I really like using the level 2 hammer because when you bop things over the head it gets a nice stun effect. You can use the level 2 hammer to break open things like these ice cap mints. If you do break open the ice cap mints be aware that they do not respawn, so if you use them for something else, they will not be coming back. You can also use the level 2 hammer for breaking open mega milk molars and milk molars, which give you specific bonuses and perks that you can explore. Once you're finished with the hedge lab, you'll receive a super chip. Once you picked up the super chip, you can take it back to Burgle for some new science unlocks, so you'll be able to purchase them in the science store at the terminal, where you can also coincidentally purchase upgrades when you get the milk molars and mega milk molars that I was mentioning smashing open earlier with your hammer. When you have the hedge super chip and you get the hedge chip unlocks, you can go to the science shop and purchase the glue masher. The glue masher is used for the glue, the repair glue that I mentioned earlier. An important thing to craft if you've already crafted your level 2 tools is actually the insect bow. It does take some more wolf spider parts aka spider fangs, but is 100% worth it. It's one of the best upgrades that you'll have. No more roasting things over spits. Cooking has also been released in a recent update. You can purchase it from the science shop. Many of the recipes for cooking actually do require the jerky rack, so you will have to build one. The jerky rack is useful in more ways than one because the food that comes off of it doesn't expire. so. It's uh, definitely a necessary upgrade from here. Some of the recipes you can make in the cookery are nachos, amelant, and mite loaf. Uh, they provide various different bonuses. Definitely take a look at them. Uh, one such bonus is thorns, which makes it so that your opponents take damage when they hit you. And here we're going to make use of the level 2 axe that you should have made earlier so that we can cut down some husky weeds. Husky weeds do require the level 2 axe, but they are definitely worth it because they provide a lot more weed stems than the dandelions that you can chop down with the level one ax. Since you're gonna be doing all this hauling of materials and such, it's a good time to visit some non-combat related uh, perks and set bonuses. For example, the ant armor set allows you to carry uh, twice the stack size of items like grass planks and weed stems so that you can haul much more in a single gathering. And of course, we have to harvest these materials for construction. We're going to construct us a little bit of a bigger base. It's probably time to expand. If you've built as many items as we've discussed in the last three videos, then you're going to need some more space. So you'll need the multi-story bases uh, purchased from the science shop. And the finer details of base building we're not actually going to cover in this video. I think it's a bit too nuanced and there's a bit too much information to discuss. So you'll lay down some floors and start expanding your base. Once you're done expanding the base to your liking though, uh, it's a good time to build the jerky rack. Once you have the jerky rack built, you can start adding items to it, such as aphid or uh, other bugs that you can 
uh, bludgeon in the yard in order to get jerky, jerkified versions of those. And you can use those in the cookery or you can eat them by themselves. Like I said earlier, the cook cookery allows you to cook things such as mite loaf and nachos that offer different bonuses, but they do have some item requirements. Upgrades will significantly improve your quality of life and survivability in Grounded. And that about wraps it up for this one. I hope you enjoy it and you can take something from these tutorials and add it and give a little something extra to your Grounded playthrough. In the next tutorial, I hope to cover some more information about the Pond Lab, the Haze Lab, and the other labs throughout the yard and we'll just see what else we can get into. Thank you for watching as always, and remember, subscribing is free.